Murakoze cyane. Thank you very much. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Tubahayikaze muri uyu munsi. We welcome you today. Umunsi wacu wa munani. It's on the 8th day of the conference. Umunsi wo gusoza amateraniro yacu. As we conclude the conference. E turashima Imana yatwemereye kugira ngo dushobere kuba hano. We thank God for enabling us to be here. Turashimira n'umushumba wacu mukuru. And we thank our senior pastor. Washoye kutwizera kaduha uyu mwanya ngo tuganire. That entrusted us with such an opportunity to speak to you. Umuntu amaze kubona summary byatambutse kuva ku cyumweru. After seeing a recap of what happened from Sunday. Gushika amateraniro ya mbere twabaye mu hano. And also the first service that we were in this morning. Umuntu yavuga nka one may say as it's written in Hebrews if we talked about the things of Jephthah and others what, it would be too much because already a lot has been spoken of. So much good has been spoken of already. So this same God that enabled all those people to give of us, may he be glorified. Our senior pastor that God gave this vision may God bless him it is not an ordinary vision it is an extraordinary vision so we thank God that we are still under this umbrella hallelujah, hallelujah. so that same God bless you as you are seated here and bless you as you follow us continue to be with us even in the word of God we are coming from Burundi. We will thank you for receiving us warmly. As uh, the leader Robert told us. And the moderator said it. In the name of the delegation from Burundi. Because I'm the last born. Among those that are preaching here, let me thank you, who, you who hosted us. You received, it, you received us as children of the house. They were joyful. I believe all the others from other nations, none of them got sick. So the delegation from Burundi kindly stand. Stand for recognition that you also thank God. This is delegation from Burundi. These are all your children coming from Burundi. Kindly have your seats. God bless you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We can't just go without showing our senior pastor. Our great friends who are with us during the war. Like Apostle Aben over there. Kindly stand Apostle. The day they concluded, the, they stopped the conference. That man came and we were with him in the office. He prayed with us who were about five in the office until uh, 10 p.m. He said, do not worry. He helped us as he comforted the church in that difficult time. So, Abel, this is the headquarter of our church. This is where we fetch from as Zion of Burundi. Thank you. I needed to present you to our pastors. Dr. Nagaju has left. He, oh, she's here. She's a pastor from the Presbyterian of Rwanda. And she is overseeing the university of theology. She put aside everything and said, I want to help you and be with you. She too was with us and taught us. And she strengthened us even when she was not part of Zion. We have friends in Zion, in Rwanda, and in Burundi. And all those following us and sitting here, that we are alive is by the strength from your hands. May God bless you. May God do good to you. 
Yes, God bless you. We have brought a new representative because we changed the different leaders. May they stand to be recognized. That's that man. He is also a civil servant. He works in the government. He is the head of a secondary school in Burundi. He said, I have not yet come to Rwanda, but I need to come and see what Zion is doing. Thank you, thank you, Honorable. God bless you. We have a resolution of conflict. We have a leader of conflict resolution. <laughs> Kindly, if you could stand. She's the one who takes control of all the conflict in the <laughs> church. She has a flag to stop anyone who bringing conflict. She is also a civil servant and she allowed to be here. May God bless you. I came with all the entire team of 10 people pastors from Burundi. Please, all the pastors we came with stand up for recognition that they may see you. There is none of the pastors that was left behind. Some of you apostles didn't know you. Only the one of Paras of Jihanga can stay standing. That man is called Gaspar. It's new in Bubanza. And it's the first time he is coming to Zion. You've now seen it and go and be firm in the work you're doing in Uganda. It was to thank you. Let's come back to the word of God. I'm with my wife. She's in charge of Ada. They work with Gregory. They work in Ada. Gregory and my wife kindly stand. Yes, Hashim. Praise God. We were two and a half months in the USA. We had left the stuff with Gregory. It wasn't easy to take it back. May God bless you so much. We needed to present the team we came with and all the others serving in the ministry. Let's read the word of God in Hebrews. Chapter 13, verse 7 and 8. Verse 7 and 8. Hebrews 13, 7 and 8. Mwibuke ababa yowara gakera wakababgira ishambori jiman. Muzirika ni herezor ginge soza abo mngiga ande kuizera kwa abo. Yeso kristu kwa yara arejo. Nuyu mungsi ni kwa rikari ni kwa zahori teka riyose. Amena. Remember those who rule over you, who have spoken the word of God to you, whose faith whose faith you follow, considering the outcome of their conduct. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. We are reading from Acts 4, th uh, verse 3. Acts 4, 13. Peter and Johanna, now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were uneducated and untrained men, they marveled and they realized that they had been with Jesus. Amen. May our God be praised. We've been learning under the theme, Africa, who is your mentor? And it was clear and taught on all the mountains. They were experts and they were inspired men of God with great revelation. We will continue in the same rhythm of showing you people mentored by God. So the word I have for you today 
is the word that says imitating the our forefathers that were taught by God imitating our fathers that were taught by God and to reach what they did because we will not be the first there are others who served with God at different levels and they changed history in every way. That is why we read the word. Remember the ones that came before us. And remember the end of their conduct. And then imitate their works. In other words, remember the people that came before you that were trained by God and how they finished their lives. So we need to walk in their footsteps. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You monitor how they started, how they walked with God and then walk in their footsteps. Someone said something well. Wow. In Hebrews 13, 8. Because Jesus was there, was with them yesterday. He is still working with us in this century. And he will work with those that will come after us. So the mentor is one. The one who mentored them yesterday. Is ready to mentor you today. And who will mentor the others that will come after you because he's a God that never changes. May our God be praised. Our God be praised. So we desire to walk in the same footsteps as those that came before us. So this writer of Hebrews says, if you read verse 11, there is a list of people that believe God. Very many men that trusted God. When you reach verse 12, they say this. If we are surrounded with such a great witness, a, a cloud of witnesses, if we are surrounded with a great cloud of witnesses, the ones in verse 11, in chapter 11, now in 12, is the cloud. Now in 13, Therefore, remember those that came before you. Those in 11, the cloud of witnesses, now we need to imitate them. God who worked with them is the same ready to work with you. The same spirit that mentored them is ready to train us as well. And will give us great revelation and knowledge. Praise God. In everything that was spoken, on all the different mountains, and what they say this morning only one word I kept one word it is the 24th edition of Africa Arise as we hear these words we are told and we come back and told again so I stood on the same word in Deuteronomy Deuteronomy 1 verse 6 the time that we have spent on this mountain is enough. If we come and learn and then we go home you come back the same year not changed. I had a problem when the doctor of Tysiris were teaching here I wanted to raise my finger and ask we are coming every year to fetch and we go back and return again I had a question the word 
words we learn from here? Did they fall on good ground? Will they fall on the dry spot? Did they fall on the stones? Are the birds taking it from the pathway? Or if it fell on fertile ground, where is the change? In Hebrews, it says when the rain falls on the ground, and the, the ground is full of water, there comes grass out of it. So it's 24 years ever since we began. And such teaching rained down on us. Is there any evidence that we have changed. So this is the question I have. We have dwelt too long on this mountain. We need to have great resolution to change all the words they say Maybe we don't hear it. When we finish the school, the Bible school in 82, the white men who are Swedish who taught us, they told us, yes, you are going to shepherd the sheep, but they are lambs in there. But there are also giraffes in there. Amen, amen. Amen. There are, there are also giraffes that have longer necks. The director who was a white man was teaching us. He said, the giraffes that we have in the church, they are the intellectuals that are greatly learned. They are experts and have been educated. They, they bring a message that I've got. But they told us, when you get into the kraal or the farm of giraffes, because you're good shepherds, try and cut and you put down so that the sheep and the lambs also may be filled. The ones who do not learn easily. So a question allowed. The eight days we are concluding. We are in the pasture of giraffes because in there is great knowledge. The things we learned were at the level of giraffes or intellectuals. But we desire to come a little lower. Some of, and most of our teachers and pastors came down. All the people that came in the service. So that when they go back home, they may change the people back home. So we read the Bible in Acts about Peter and John that were at the feet of Jesus. And they were not landmen, but they took on knowledge. When we went to Israel, the, 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 the history of the Jews, when they are teaching their children history, they take them to the field to really see where the evidence was. Not just superficially and explaining them rather when they are on the field the children will understand better. Peter and John are men who stood at the feet of Jesus. They were taught by Jesus. The twelve disciples they became seventy Yes, as he and Jesus brought them, multiplied them to one twenty. Then he went to heaven. Because they were, had, they were good students. They, they had encountered a good mentor. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There is nothing they never did. I remember the day of Pentecost when the Holy Spirit came upon them. 
Azahu. And chapter 2 when the Holy Spirit came upon them. And he anointed them. And enabled them and empowered Petero them. Yes. Now Jesus is gone. Now that he's left. And he's given a promise to us. That you lay your hands on the sick and they will be healed. He practiced instantly right there. Of being able to raise the lamb to walk. I don't know those who have gone through school. It would happen to me many times. When the teacher taught something I didn't understand and he would want to ask a question. I would hide below my desk so they don't see me. Because I didn't want him to point his finger to me and I had no answer. But when he brought it an question I understood. I would raise my hand and say, yes, sir, I can answer it. That is what happens. When a teacher brings something you're not aware of, you want to become short even when you're tall. But when they bring teachings you are accustomed to, you raise your hand for recognition that you say something. So Peter and John, because they had the vision, they wanted to silence them. They wanted to silence them so that the work of Christ will be despised. We see it in Acts. We will not be silent about what we saw. We will not be silent about what we heard. Even if you took us to the court, we will still say it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Paul. Only Paul, when he encountered the power of God, and it aligned him when he encountered the power of the Holy Spirit. The Bible says in Ephesians, God used the hands of Paul to do mighty exploits. The people mentored by God, people mentored by the power of the Holy Spirit, people that who change Africa, people who change the politics, those who change family, those who change the churches of today, are people mentored by God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Those taught by God. So if we came to Africa arise, we will not be silent about what we've heard and what we've heard. Even when it requires us to be in court, we will have it. We will be firm about what we saw. People taught by God, they are bold. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They are bold. They don't fear the mountains. They do not fear the sea. That's why we learn today. Because when the hand of God is upon you, we are pushed ahead and we advance. That is what they say Jabez required protection from God. People taught by God and they hear God and see him, they will not just be religious, but they encounter the great power of God. Praise God. When they see the hand of God, they arise in the confidence and boldness of Ezekiel. Ezekiel. God took him to the valley of dry bones. And when he reached in that valley, God asked him, him. Ezekiel can these bones live Ezekiel told God Almighty God only you know it God said yes I can do it I can do it but I desire a man to work with praise God that he will arise and bring these bonds to life so this conference people taught by God that have spent all these days listening to the great words God will send you to the wilderness to create water out of it 
you will send it to the dry bones to make them alive. I thank God that I'm with Madame Fenega Choir Jose. They received me in, in, in the UK when I was there in 2004. I was with Jose one full year. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The day I got the visa, God told me two words. I'm sending you to a dry plain for you to preach to the dry bones. He also told me in a dream, I could see myself going with apostle. He took me to an island in that island and he told me he said build three altars there it was in a dream so that you fight with the hippopotamus who will come up to eat the maize. So when I reached the UK the same dreams returned. So I asked Felix is this nation an island? He said, yes, it is an island. God told me this is a place I want you to start. That I need to preach to the dry bones. And I change them into a mighty So that I keep them from the hippopotamus. That will desire to come up and steal the plants in the land. Only God can affirm to what happened in that nation. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit said those words. He spoke those great words. What happened was amazing. But God always uses us in a great way. What do I want to say? The people taught by God, they are not scared of hippopotamus. They are not worried to preach to dry bones. That is why the Almighty Almighty God told me to say to you. That's how Ezekiel says. Now God has told me to speak to all the bones that have gathered themselves. This is what the Lord says. And then you'd have muscles. This is what the Lord says. And you get uh, the meat and the skin. This is what the Lord told me. And what was bones becomes an army of men. That is what it is to be mentored by God. You bring things from being born and they become an army of men. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. May our God be praised. I told you, Africa, Africa when you see it, it's as though it's dead. It's like dead bones. But we are in this seminar and we're taught by the word of God we will prophesy to the dry bones to be alive. Let it tell you this. It is possible, Randans, we can speak good of, the, of our nation, Randa, just like you see this beautiful place. We prophesy good promises and we look beautiful like the stars. Congo, we we'll do the same and prophesy to Congo. And prophesy good promises upon Burundi. Africa, and we speak good things upon Africa. Because God desires that we be his oracle. Not just that we hear and be quiet. I read the word of God. God during creation he created all the way to man no one helped him in all creation he created by himself till man when he got Adam he didn't work alone. He worked together with Adam. So God needs you. He desires that you lend him your hands. That you lend him your mouth. He has worked all this time.
time by himself. But when man came, he worked with him. So you're here as a man, and you're following us as a human being in this conference of Africa arise. On its 24th edition, let us hear it and proclaim it before God. When we get back to Burundi, you will see a change there. When we go back to Congo, there will be a change there. When we go to the USA, there will be a change there. When we go to South Africa, we will go with change. Because the Bible says in Ezekiel, I saw the river come from the Lord's temple and it flowed down. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And it flowed and it went through the wilderness. And where it passed in the wilderness, there was life and pastures came. Then it kept flowing. It went into the lake. And that lake was revived. There was no living beings in there. Because of the river from the Lord's temple that was flowing with life, you were a living water. Wherever you pass, you need to live life. Praise God. If it is in education, you need to give life. If it's in politics, you need to give life. We are a river flowing from the temple of God. A random musician saying, let, us, let me just be a river that is full of power. Let me, be, let me be a channel full of life. A channel, Jesus, full of your power. We are a channel that is full of power. Praise God. We are a channel from the house of God. May our God be praised. The days we've been here, we need to be confident. Remember those that came before us. I came to look at a man called Noah. He lived in a time of sin and sinners. In a, a time where people were sinful. The sin was too much and came before the face of God. And God said, I'm going to destroy all these people with a flood. Before Noah, there was no rain. There was things that were growing from the dew. So there was no rain in that time of Noah. But during Noah's time, because he had been taught by God, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. he had been taught by God, he heard the way God spoke, and he did what God commanded him. God told him, build me an ark. No one heard that command except Noah. Then he built the ark in chapter 7. He says, no, Noah, you and your family can't no, be right. Only you are righteous in this generation. Only you understand what I desire. In the time of Noah, only Noah could hear God. When people saw him, they thought he was crazy. Sometimes we do things like this. They think we lost our mind. They they don't know us. They don't understand us. In in Revelation, it says in the church of Ephesus when you reach Laodicea all the seven churches they would always conclude with this saying let who he has ears listen to what the spirit says to the church whoever has ears let him hear what the spirit says to the church so the things we're learning in Africa arise our ears hearing is it 
are we understanding it's the message for the time those who have ears so know a heart what others had ignored and he did amazing things that is why he came back to that word let's remember those who came before us they heard what others never used to hear like Abraham arose that arise and go he goes without knowing where he's going but in the plan of God he's heading to his blessing all these are men in the Bible so this book that we have is a book that we learn how men were taught by God how they began their work with God and how they finished it so let's imitate their faith let's imitate our father those that are in the Old Testament or in the New Testament or even others that we know but are no longer alive that did the work of God hallelujah and also seeing from a doctor, uh, apostle Dr. Paul Jitkwaza he is not Abraham. He is not history. He is, we are learning from him as a person who is alive. Where I remember when the first Africa Arise Conference began. I could see when they are clearing the place we are going to have the conference. I asked them. I think I was asking uh, Mama Angelique, there were caterpillars to ah, clear the place. It was out in Alpha Palace. They were clearing the land. I say this place looks very big. We, are used, we were used to a vision of a church of 25 meters by 20. Let me tell you this. Yes, Ashim. Praise God. Honestly, before God, Apotre, Apostle, radio, he would talk about the TV and the radio to be set up. In, when the Zion Temple was still a ministry, was still in the cave and the prayer rooms. And it was a foreign language like Chinese that we would not easily comprehend. It was too big a vision for us. But our God be praised. Remember those that came before us. Today we are encountering it. The TVs are alive. Radio is live. I remember one Congolese pastor. He came in the conference here. He was from Uvira. He I went to visit his church in Uvira. So he starts to profess, uh, to give a testimony among his Christians when he returned. He told them, I just came from a conference called Africa Haguruka. That was in Zion in Uvira. I was sitting in a church like the one of Joyce Meyer. That place is like Joyce Meyer's church. He was amazed when he came here. So when he got here, he was well received. He went to the classic hotel. He would tell his, his Christians. I was in a hotel called Classic. The problem I encountered there. I did not dream the things of heaven. I was dreaming as though I was in the USA. <laughs> but I understood him. He's coming from Uvira. He went into upstairs hotel in So he was not dreaming about the things of heaven, but things as though he was in America. This is Zion Temple. We thank God. This, all this was a dream. All this was a dream. In 1995, in 1996, let me come back to this word. Remember, praise God. 
I'm now talking about people who are living. Those who have led us to death. In this word of authentic word ministry. And Zion Temple. Remember when this ministry began. It was like a dream. Now we are comfortable in it. Hallelujah. We are seated in it. So the Bible says, let us try to walk in the same footsteps of these people that have received this vision. Let's forget all those because the one we have was taught by God as well and is led by the Holy Spirit. That is why when you walk in this vision, when you walk in this anointing, there is a lot that will transform. May our God be praised. A lot will be transformed. If we receive this knowledge, praise God. You do things without clarity. Do you remember in the cave? We had a place they would sleep, a place they would pray from. You have a small space, but it has different cubicles. But in a dream, they knew that they would reach the five continents. Hallelujah. Do you hear me? Those ones in the small cubicles in the cave. I believe the U.S. is following us. Europe is following. Australia is following. We feel the whole mountain hermon. People that started from a small cubicle. They had a great vision. That is why when you walk in this calling, there is no fear. There is no fear. We, for, we will achieve much. If we are allowed to come to this seminar, we need to fetch and go with it. Let me emphasize. Africa arise. Africa arise. Africa arise. Africa arise. Now it's arising. There is hope. Let me conclude. Let's remember those who lived before us. That among them is Apostle Paul Kikwasa, That showed us the vision. There's something they put in the car. It's a GPS. It leads you where you want to go. It will show you where to turn the right. It will keep telling you to continue. It will even show you that there is traffic jam on the way. You follow it. Then it will tell you you have reached your destination. So we have a GPS. We are not yet at our destination. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When it says right, we go there. When it says left, we go there. He said there is a roundabout you go around it until we reach the final destination where Africa rise needs to go so if the GPS is the mountain of family it's pushing us into education and pushing us into business and into politics and pushing us into media and all the other mountains when all of them have the glory of God God will say you have arrived at your destination but before the GPS stops we will keep following hallelujah. hallelujah the Holy Spirit is with us may our God be praised so we thank God to be in such a good moment to follow our fathers be it in the Old Testament or those of the New Testament or the others that passed on and those that we have leading us today let's walk with God we will achieve much hallelujah 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 
Those who want brides, they can come in the church. If you want to get married, come and get them from the good families. If you want good politicians and leaders, you get them from the church. Because we are a channel that is flowing from the temple of God. So in this church, in Africa arise, it is in a nursery. It is a nursery where they put the seedlings and they pick the cuttings and the seedlings and plant them. So in this conference, God will get good politicians from here. God will create good women. They will train good children because it's a nursery. You, you take care of a good seedling before it grows. God bless you. We thank you very much. Those who have given us this opportunity and those following us, we are going to say this word. The time we spent on this mountain is too long. We need to move and transform people. Amen, amen. Hallelujah. Amen, amen. Hallelujah. Listen as I conclude. In Congo where we grew up, Little children are malnourished because they eat badly. But this is how the Congolese say. You see this malnourished child who is looking very unhealthy. The Congo man call him Kisheta. A, a child who is a dwarf and is malnourished. But in this time, we find that our children want to be pushed ahead too fast. So we, or we put them, we want them to walk faster. And we put them in walk so they can learn how to walk. They will run in the walker as they walk, they learn. What am I saying? The ones who are malnourished. And those who are not standing up to walk. We are putting them in a walker. Yes, Ashim. Hallelujah. You need to arise and walk until your hands, the legs become firm. And then they take the walk away and you walk firmly. Maybe you can't walk. But together with the Holy Spirit, they put you in the walk and you will move and change outside. Praise God. There are people who are dwarfed and malnourished in same this lame man had spent 40 years at the temple of beautiful. But when Peter got there, he said, Arise and walk. Arise and walk. He arose. When they reached the church, they were confused. It's like the other one. But what's funny, this one can jump. When we leave Africa, arise. They will be amazed when you get home. They knew you in a certain way. Now they will see you jumping up and down. They look like they were lame. But they are walking now. What happened? They, meant a, they met a mentor that had a command. I don't have gold and silver. But what I have, I give it to you. Arise and walk in Jesus' name. May God arise you from that place, that people see you in an extraordinary way. Please stand up for prayer. God bless you. I conclude in this word. The time we have spent on this mountain is long enough. The time we have spent being taught is long enough. What God wants is to go and influence where you came from on all the mountains and you bring the glory of God. We thank you, Lord Jesus. 
You have been good to us. We thank you for those following. And all those that are here. Let your glory come. And touch everybody. The words we've heard. 24 years. And we hear the word of God. Take us out of this place. Where we will have been lame for too long. And take us out. We are channel from the temple of God. That takes life outside. Where there was a dry land it becomes pestilence. And all the dead seas become life. Let your grace and your peace Lord. Abound in this place in this moment. Until the evening when we conclude the conference. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Amen.